Hi, welcome to this video. We are going to go through the process of loading up a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus with the Raspbian uh, Debian image that we can download from the uh, Raspberry Pi website and um, I will take you through the initial steps to get it up and running uh, on an HDMI monitor. So first thing you need to do is go to the Raspberry Pi um, dot org website. The easiest way I found that was just to type in Raspberry Pi model B plus download and the first non-advertising entry right here is the one that you want. It's uh, www.raspberrypi.org and slash product slash model B plus. So if we just click the link for that we go in. Um, here's a bit of blurb about the B. There's a nice little image here. One of the things I didn't mention when I was just going through the quick walkthrough of the B Plus was that they've also improved the mounting capability. They have four nice equally distant um, squarely set holes now so that you can screw this down using some standoffs onto a board or into a case or something. Much better than the previous version. So before we go to the download part, just a quick flip down here about the extras that they've included in the B Plus from the B. Uh, first thing is more GPIO, so we have 40 pins now as opposed to 26 in the previous version. Uh, we have twice as many USB ports as previously um, presented. Also, there is a change to a micro SD card. The older Model B had a friction fit SD card socket where you pushed it in and you basically just pulled it to get it out again. Lots of people have been having problems with that. The new Pi has a push to put it in and a push and then release to get it out again and it's been reduced down to a micro USB adapter which is really really cool. Um, lower power consumption I mentioned before that it is now using um, buck regulators on board which are very very high efficiency compared to a linear regulator because you're not dissipating um, anywhere near as much heat in the in the load regulation for the power and according to this it's actually half the amount of power consumption on the B plus compared to the B and considering you have the same memory uh, the same processor the same video um, that's quite an improvement and that's just simply by changing the regulators uh, better audio by having a low noise power supply for the audio system which is nice and a need of form factor uh, which as I was saying the you know the B plus has these nice mounting holes now included um, move the composite video onto a three and a half millimeter jack so a lot of people are saying that you've actually lost the composite video um, which used to be over here but they've actually now included it into this jack um, so you actually haven't lost it you just got to get a cable that will break it out for you um, anyway so that's a quick rundown on what's different on this thing um, there may be more uh, I'll link in the website anyway on the we on my uh, web blog so that you can find it easily um, the board itself is obviously available from Element 14 who kindly provided one to me for this review. Um, you can also get it from Radio Spares, um, Allied Electronics and Egoman. So the area we want to go now is to the download section and of course just as the previous Raspberry Pi Model B and original Raspberry Pi there are a number of different choices and if you're really really new to this and you want to play around with a diff few different things Noobs is probably the way to go, but it's a one and a half gigabyte download, or just a little bit short of that. Um, I happen to know already that even if I went into Noobs, the one I'm going to pick is Raspbian, and this is about an 800 megabyte download. So all I'm going to do here is click the download zip, um, and save as to my local downloads folder. Uh, now I've already done this, so I'm just going to cancel out of this, but you would just save it, it saves it to a zip file. Um, it takes a few minutes to do the download, so when you go through this, you know, don't be impatient. It's all dependent on your internet speeds and everything. So once you download, um, you will then go on to unpacking the zip file and writing it to an SD card, which I'm going to take you through now. Um, just quickly before I do that, I just wanted to scroll down here to show you how many choices there are. One, two, three, four. You have six variations of things that you can download. So this one is, um, where is it? This one is a really interesting one because if you wanted to set up your Raspberry Pi as a media center, um, then this is the image that you would want to download for that. I have never tried this myself yet, so I can't speak to how good it is or not. The only one I've really played with is Raspbian, which is a Debian-based OS.
uh, all of course running onto Linux. Um, and the noobs is the one that includes a lot of different options. Like I say, if you're not sure what you want, you download this, you can actually pick and choose. Uh, and the noobs light is, as it says here, network install only. Again, haven't tried. I've tried noobs, so that's fine. Um, noobs light, I have not tried. So anyway, uh, let's just assume that we've now downloaded this and we will go into the folder where we had downloaded it, um, which is here. And you can see right here, it's downloaded. And what I've also done is unzipped it into a folder. I'm not going to uh, waste your time waiting for me to unzip it. It takes two or three minutes, maybe five minutes to unzip because it is 800 megabytes um, as a zip image. And as you can see here, once it's unzipped, it's almost three gigabytes. Okay, so make sure you've got plenty of hard drive space for this. The next thing you'll notice is that it's an IMG. It's not an ISO, so it's not like a CD image. Um, Microsoft provides a tool that is called um, Windows 7 USB DVD and it's designed to, and I'll bring it up on the screen here, it's designed to write ISO files to either an SD card or a USB um, stick or to an actual CD-ROM uh, drive. But it will only work with ISOs, it won't work with image files. All right, So this one's no good for you, so don't bother trying to uh, use it because you'll just be wasting your time. The one that you want to actually use is a one called Win32 Disk Imager which is actually normally part of your operating system as well under Windows and it will do the job that you need. I'm just going to fire my one up right here. It needs obviously admin privileges to run. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's really really simple and it can actually do reading from the SD card or any you know or a memory stick and it can also write to them. So in our case we're going to be writing to the memory stick from the um, image that we just unzipped to our hard drive. So you click on browse um, and right now it defaults to your disk imager. We need to go to our downloads folder. So we go in here and there's the folder. So there's the image we want to write to the um, drive, uh, sorry the SD card. Okay. Now I've put a 64 gig SD card in there. Um, this is going to write the image and it's going to set it up as a 4 gigabyte SD card. So once we actually plug this into the Raspberry Pi B Plus, um, we will have the opportunity to expand it out to the full size of the SD card, which you'll see shortly. So we do this and we will just click uh, open, which will bring us back to here. We want to make sure we click write, not read, otherwise it will overwrite our image from the nothing that is currently on the SD card and that wouldn't be good um, so we click right here All right, you confirm that you're writing to the right device now I've only got one device plugged in that it can be written to that's not a regular hard drive which is my G drive so I'm just gonna say yes now this is gonna take about five minutes or so to do the writing here so I'm just gonna um, pause the video and I'll bring it back online once we get to the relevant point okay just about done there we go so now we've done that, it's been written to the card, it's time to plug it into the Raspberry Pi Model B and see what happens. So I'm going to go back to my video camera pointing at the screen. Unfortunately I can't video capture, sorry, screen capture on there because it's running the Raspberry Pi. Um, but uh, we'll continue. So just before I start, I just wanted to compare the two um, Raspberry Pi Model B's. So on the left here this one is the Raspberry Pi Model B and the right one is the B+. So some of the really obvious differences right off the bat is that um, the audio input output over here has now been moved to the other side. Um, the camera module socket is still there as is the Ethernet. And the HDMI has been moved down a little bit. Um, the composite video output has gone completely to make room for the extended I.O. connector um, and the small USB power input has been moved to the side. Um, the other bit you'll notice too is that on the B we have this linear regulator that was quite inefficient um, in some regards in the power that it was dissipating compared to what the module is using. Um, and the new B+, Plus, they've put a buck regulator system in here, um, which is going to make much more efficient use of what you've got. I haven't looked at the circuit diagrams yet to see how that will affect the amount of load you can put onto the two USB outputs, 
Um, but if you consider that the input is a USB connector, therefore it is limited um, technically to maybe one to two amps. Um, certainly the standard is one, but as a power adapter, it can go up to more. Um, you've got four USB adapter outputs here. Each one technically should be able to power up to half an amp each, which is the standard USB specifications. So that will be two amps right there without in, even considering the 500 milliamps or so that the board itself uses. So if you're connecting a power adapter to this, um, you need to make sure that if you want to use the full capabilities of the USB, it's a two and a half amp um, adapter and it has a really good quality cable. Um, there's a video that is on my website and also on Element 14's website where I describe the issues and actually show um, the effect of having bad USB cables on a Raspberry Pi causing it to crash and everything else. So when you first power this up, maybe you don't have anything connected to the USB ports, it might work just fine. And then later on, as you start connecting things here, all of a sudden it's not working very well. And it's highly likely that the power coming into the Raspberry Pi the, the voltage part of it has dropped below 4.75 volts, which is the minimum that it would require to normally operate correctly. Um, if you haven't seen the video before, I will link it into the post um, when it goes up. But just bear that in mind if you're trying to use this. So the other thing we're going to do once we've got this up and running is I have these sensors from my um, Pi that I used previously, which I had on here, which is it's a basic Logitech um, mouse adapter, uh, wireless, um, a 802.11n Wi-Fi adapter module. I think that came from Element 14, and a uh, Logitech mouse, sorry, keyboard um, transmitter as well. So. Um, we will see how well these work um, without having to get in. You know, I don't know whether I'm going to have to start downloading drivers or whether they're just going to work off the bat. Uh, I certainly had to load, I think, some drivers for a bit of it on the old B, but we'll see how much the uh, kernel has improved on the B+. Anyway, let's get to um, powering up the B and connecting it, and we'll see how things go from there. Um, there was one other quick thing I wanted to point out too, which is actually a significant difference, and I think for the better, and that is on the B, if you notice right here, it's difficult to see, let me just lift it up and show you, because it's on a black background. The SD card is a full size SD card, and it sticks out considerably over the edge of the Raspberry Pi Model B, as you can see, and it's a pain in the butt, um, the size of this, and there's been a lot of people who've been having issues uh, with reliability of the socket as well. But when you look at the new Model B Plus, um, they're using a micro SD card and it's tiny. I mean, it barely sticks out on the edge, just enough so that you can actually um, push it and actually be able to retrieve it out of the socket. So I think that's a really nice improvement that they've done as well for this. So I don't have anything on this one yet. We're gonna have to load it up shortly and uh, um, I've just de downloaded from the site. So to get things started, I'm just going to connect two things. I haven't powered it up yet. All I'm going to do is plug in the HDMI adapter and the USB cable um, to a USB hub that is being powered um, from a separate 2 amp um, adapter. Now the one thing you'll note here is I'm using a very short cable. It's um, maybe about 18 inches long to 2 feet at most. Um, that's the complete thing right there. And the, the advantage of that is that even if it was thinner wires, you're going to get very little voltage drop across its length, uh, which is a good thing. That You really, really need to keep these cables good quality. So I've set the camera looking at the screen that I've got connected to the HDMI output of the Raspberry Pi. Um, I've got no memory card in this or anything else right now. All I'm going to do is power it up to show you um, what, if anything, shows up on the screen when you don't have a Pi, um, any code being read by the Pi. So I'm connecting it right now. So both the red light and the green light on the Pi are turned on. Um, they're both staying on steadily. I believe one of the lights is uh, indicative of reading from the SD card. And as you can see, you get absolutely nothing, which of course is not surprising because there's no code to execute. 
So if you get this scenario, uh, suspect that your card is empty or um, that it's not plugged in properly or something like that. This is normal behavior when there's no card plugged in. Okay, we now have the SD card written. I've just plugged it into the uh, micro SD slot on the Raspberry Pi and I'm about to power it up. So the computer screen um, that you're looking at is my connected to the HDMI output of the Raspberry Pi and I plug in the power in now. So hopefully after a second or two the red light power light is on the uh, activity light is currently off it's just come on and as you can see on the screen it's now already loading up the Raspberry Pi operating system. Um, apologize for the angle I can't get me and the Pi in at the same time Let's see if I can move this a little bit better. There we go. <coughs> So I don't have anything else plugged in yet, so even if it comes up and prompts me for something, I will not be able to answer it. So here's our first question. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so you can see that better. So what it's asking me here is um, expand the file system. So if you remember what I said before, um, the file system that it writes on the image is only 4 gig, and yet it's on a 64 gigabyte card. So I do want to expand this. Now, the question is, how do I do this now because I don't have a keyboard plugged in? Well, I showed you the devices before, and what I have here is, bring it into view, that's the little um, wireless adapter for the Logitech keyboard that I have. came with it, I'm just going to simply plug this in. Even though I'm already powered up and it's waiting for answers, um, I'm curious to see whether it will actually recognize the keyboard um, without having to restart it again. So I'm going to plug this in now and we'll see what happens. So plugging it in, just figuring out which way to plug it in. Okay, I'm plugging it in now into just a random one of the USB ports and see what happens. So the activity light is flickering around a little bit there. Um, I'm going to see, got to turn my keyboard on of course. Let's see if it now recognizes it. And there you go. So even though I didn't have it plugged in before I powered it up, um, and I'm you know, the very first time doing anything with this install, it still recognized the fact that I now have a keyboard plugged in and I can actually do something. So I'm going to, um, actually I'm going to take a bit of a leap and also try and get my get that in view, Logitech mouse connected up too. So I'll turn on the mouse because I'm going to need this shortly anyway. And I'm going to plug in the Logitech wireless adapter for the mouse into another socket. That's plugged in now. And even though we don't have a mouse yet, um, I'm curious to see whether it will recognize it once we get there. So we're going to expand the file system. So I'll press enter and it is now resized. Now we have to do a reboot. So I'm just going to say OK. So I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to just go in. I'm going to leave the password open for now. Um, I want to boot the Pi from the desktop rather than just a command line. So I'm going to say I want desktop login as user Pi as the graphical desktop. So the username is going to be Pi to log in with uh, until I set up another one. And that's done. Um, so what other options we have here? Set a password. I'm just going to leave that open just for the moment. Um, internationalization options. So we'll go in there and have a quick look. So I'm going to change my locale. So I'll go in there. And it's just busy doing something right now. Just give it a second. Of course, everything's running off of the um, micro SD card, so it doesn't always run. Um, I'm just going to select all locales. So um, English GB UTF-8, that's good enough. I'll go OK. Wait for that, it's just updating the um, image. As you can see on the bottom of the screen, it's just bringing in the uh, generating locale files and putting them on the SD card. So we'll just give that a moment to happen. Oh, you can't see because I'm zoomed in too far. Let me just bring it out a little bit. 
so you can see everything. All right, that's done. So now we're going to go down to the next option, enable camera. Well, I don't have one of those, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Um, not going to bother overclocking it. Um, advanced options, let's have a look, see what's in here. So um, host name, leave that alone, I think. Uh, memory split, leave that alone. Uh, SSH is always good to enable if you want to do remote control, so we'll enable SSH. That's now done. Uh, go back to advanced options. Uh, audio and update, so we'll leave those two alone for the moment. And I think that's everything there, so we'll go down to back. And anything else left on this menu to do? I don't think so. We're not bothering with the password right now. We've already selected to use the graphical desktop. Um, we've selected the internationalization option. We're leaving the camera disabled. Um, Rush Track is a online Raspberry Pi website for tracking where in the world all these Raspberry Pis are. Um, don't care about that. Overclocking, I'm going to leave it alone done the advanced options. Uh, that's just information about the config tool. So it looks like we're done. So I'm just going to hit finish and we're going to reboot. So we'll say yes. And now it's going to shut down and restart again. This should now also expand my uh, file system on the SD card. Oh, sorry, it'll pick up on the expanded file system on the SD card. And it should automatically go into the graphical interface as well. Obviously, as you can see in the top left-hand corner, it's already showing some graphics with the little Raspberry Pi icon. There's the uh, information about resizing, just gone through there. Now, all being well, it should also have recognized my mouse, which I just simply plugged in to see what would happen. So there's the graphical interface, which is really cool. And there's all of our menu options showing up. And... There we go, the mouse also works. So that is really, really nice. Now, of course, I have Ethernet on here, um, but I also have one of these little USB Wi-Fi adapters. So if I actually go into Wi-Fi config right now, which is one of the uh, default menu options, uh, just double clicked on it, it's just starting to come up. You'll see that if I go to scan, obviously there's nothing to find, all right? Because it doesn't even have a Wi-Fi adapter plugged in. So if I just plug this in now, I'm not going to power off the Pi or anything, I'm just literally going to plug it in. So this is the third device I'm now plugging into the USB. Uh, none of these are high power devices, so they're not going to overload anything. Okay, that's now plugged in. I'll just give it a few seconds to uh, allow the Raspberry Pi to recognize that it's there and if it has a driver to load it up. Um, probably should be long enough. So now I'm going to double click the Wi-Fi config again. And it's showing up now the wireless LAN port and if I click on scan you can see it's now picking up um, four wireless networks. They're all mine. Um, so, well, the first one isn't. I'm not sure whose that is. One of my neighbors probably. And uh, funny thing is it's the strongest signal. So I'm just going to pick this bottom one, which is my own network. So I'm going to double click that. Uh, okay, so we've just managed to get connected now. Unfortunately, I've forgotten what my password was for it because I haven't entered it for a long time. So I had to go to the router and check. Uh, just put that in. So now um, simply it's completed status, WPA2 PSK. Um, now, one of the funny things here is it says the encryption is CCMP. That's not actually what I have set up on my router. It's TK... SP, which is one of the options and one of the other, uh, other enterprise ones. But what I found was the CCMP is the one that covers really both of them. So um, if you don't get the one you think it is working, try CCMP uh, and you might find that it actually works fine. So as you can see here, I'm connected to my network. It's given itself an IP address and um, we're good to go. So what I'm going to do is exit from this. I will fire up the uh, default browser, which is Midori. And we'll see if we have internet access. And we're going straight to Google, it looks like. Um, give it a second. 
got the logo. I have to remind myself I'm running on a Raspberry Pi, not on a uh, mega fast PC. So let's just go in here and we'll do Raspberry Pi B plus. Um, and search and there we go. So now we have the Raspberry Pi up and running. We have internet access. We have a wireless mouse and a wireless keyboard. Um, my keyboard being one of these nice Logitech ones. It's actually only a $20 keyboard. It's pretty cheap, but it works really, really nicely. And uh, if I just scan down now back to the Raspberry Pi, you'll see that I've got um, these extra devices now plugged into it. All right, so the one, I just let that focus if it will. There we go. So what we have here is this one here is a 2.4 gigahertz uh, adapter for the mouse. The one on the bottom here is the 2.4 gigahertz adapter for the keyboard. Um, I'm not sure if it will work for both, but they were, one of them was bought recently. One was bought a long, long time ago, so it's unlikely. And the one at the top with the blue flashy light on is the Wi-Fi adapter. So that's pretty good. Um, start to finish with the exception of trying to uh, find the right password. Probably, um, you know, five minutes to download the image, five minutes to burn it to um, the SD card. Uh, a few minutes to extract it, so there's 15 minutes and maybe uh, 15 minutes of setup. So probably half an hour end to end um, to set up the Raspberry Pi Model B with internet access. Um, so that's pretty good. I don't know um, what issues other people have been having, but I do find that uh, sometimes if you don't follow the right procedures um, or you try to use a uh, cheap SD card or something like that, you can get into problems. And as you saw on my Windows machine here, um, it quite happily connected and um, downloaded the image, the, the Raspbian image, and wrote it to the 64 gig uh, SD card, which actually that's a matter of interest. Let's see if I've actually got 64 gig up on the screen. So let me just expand back out a little bit. and. Uh, See if we can have a look. I can't remember where I have a look for this thing. Okay, discover the right command, simply df-h. So we'll put this in and we'll see if it is expanded up to the 64 gigs. So there's the command and there's our output. I'll just zoom in on that so that you can see. There we go. And so we've got the root FS is 59 gigabytes. So it's a 64 gig SD card, so it looks like it has expanded out quite nicely because um, there's a bunch of other drive space been allocated as well, separate to that. So um, out of 64 gigs, we've still got 54 gigs available, so we're not doing too bad at all. Now, one of the standard things you want to do usually once you've got all this stuff done is actually to do an update to your drivers and everything else. So Okay, let's uh, try this. Ah, need a sudo. All right, so sudo space apt dash get space update will um, update all of your libraries that are currently installed on the Raspberry Pi um, to the latest version. So this may take a few minutes. Uh, I'm just going to pause the video while it's uh, busy doing that. Or not. I guess I can't pause while it's uh, going. We'll just wait for it. I'll just cut it out. You can see here when you do the um, pseudo space apt-get space update, it 
it uh, will go through everything that's currently configured on the system and update the libraries for it so it can take a while and of course it's downloading over the Wi-Fi and over the internet for all of these as well so you just have to be patient and if you look on the bottom right hand side of the screen you'll see that little green block that's the CPU utilization of the Raspberry Pi and as you can see it's just maxed out I mean I don't have anything particularly uh, heavy duty running or anything but it is certainly taking its toll on um, running this command so you, know, um, you can imagine that if I had any real applications running while I was doing this they would all be starting to grind to a halt because there's nothing act actively processing in the background I mean yes the browser is open here and if I close that I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference to this uh, if I get rid of the file manager as well Ah, well, it's come down because it's finished anyway. So that took a few minutes to happen. And now the Raspberry Pi has the latest updates um, for the installed drivers. Now, really, you just need to choose what you're going to install um, and using the apt-get or some of the graphical interfaces of your choice, you will uh, download, install, and run the programs that you want to. Some of the basic things that are already in here are obviously the terminal um, screen which is right here which we were currently using you have the Midori um, web browser you can download a variant of Chrome and other browsers if you want to um, the Wi-Fi config you've already seen um, preferences the Pi Store has a little application here to go straight to the Pi Store if I just start that up a second um, there's an OCR reader optical character recognition for the people that don't know what that acronym means um, so in the Pi Store here, can you see it? Yeah, let me browse out a little bit so you can see it better. There we go. A um, few of the popular games, some of them are obviously paid for, uh, and the ones, so, you know, some of them are free. Okay, so you can just browse through those and you can download them straight to your Pi, straight from this browser session. Okay, that completes the basic setup of the Raspberry Pi. All that's now left to do is to put your own things on. On the next video, I'm going to look at adding the InOcean Pi um, drivers and get the sensors up and running on my desktop here, uh, which will be uh, of interest to anybody that's doing the Element 14 um, backyard challenge and other challenges that are currently running um, within the website and on the road test. So stay tuned for that one.